Good morning. My name is Mike Quentin, pastor of Mesquite Baptist Church in Mesquite, Nevada. Thank you so much for joining us on this uh, last Sunday before uh, Christmas of 2021. And I'm sure you must have found us on uh, either YouTube, where we place this broadcast, or on our Facebook page, where we also post this, and on our website, where there's a little button to push to find these weekly broadcasts. If not, uh, we do have a Facebook page, and we have a website, mesquitebaptistchurch.com, as well as a physical address, 742 West Pioneer Boulevard, Suite A Like Adam, Mesquite, Nevada. Sunday morning, 1030 worship, Wednesday afternoon, 130 Bible study. So join us if you can there or on YouTube or wherever. But again, thank you for joining us. And of course, being the last Sunday before th uh, Christmas, the title of this message is It's a Boy. And we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 to begin with. And then we'll be in the book of Luke and other uh, references throughout this, of course. So while you're getting your Bibles, I just want to tell you, I was at the library the other day and a, a copy of A Christmas Carol fell off the shelf and onto my foot. And boy, it hurt like the Dickens. Mm -hmm. Think about it while you're getting your Bibles. Anyway, I'm going to read to you from Luke chapter 2. Verses 1 through 7. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because Joseph was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn for them. Father, thank you so much for this miracle 2,000 years ago. Lord, you promised it right at the beginning in the Garden of Eden, and here we are so many years later, and the promise is still true. Lord, we pray that this message be a great joy to those who are believers and a great opening of hearts to those who aren't. In your precious name, amen. The year, the year was 1967. My wife was carrying our firstborn. Back then, we had no way of determining the, the sex, the gender of the child. And so we wondered for nine months, would it be a boy? Would it be a girl? As the months went by, we poured over books and lists and all these resources people gave us with baby names, what we'll call this name, this baby, when it's born. We only looked at boys' names, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, for some reason, we never looked at girls' names. Don't know why, but we only looked at boys' names, and the baby, when he was born, was a boy. 1973, with our second child. We only picked girls' names. Again, we didn't know why, because at that time, there was no way to determine the gender of that child. Sure glad the baby was a girl, because otherwise uh, she would have had a boy's name if we had picked a boy's name, uh, like that song with Johnny Cash, a boy named Sue, right? With modern technology, the baby's God-given, God-assigned gender can be determined as early as 18 weeks with an ultrasound. Even at 12 weeks with other means. This has given parents and relatives and friends information before the birth to help decorate the nursery, to determine what presents to bring to a baby shower, uh, 
Will it be a boy or will it be a girl? Now they know, and they know ahead of time. And as you know, it's become a, a, a social media bragging rights event. People post on social media uh, and they go to extremes to try and make their gender reveal better than the last gender reveal that they saw. Well, in 2008, the first known gender reveal party was held and posted on social media. These have sometimes resulted in injuries, death, and even devastating wildfires by people setting off uh, pyrotechnics, fireworks, uh, to show the color of the smoke is blue or the color of the smoke is pink for a boy or a girl, or explosions with the, the smoke. And unfortunately, people have lost their lives. Thousands of acres of land has been burned up uh, as a result of these gender reveal parties gone wrong? Well, Ecclesiastes 119, Solomon wrote, There is nothing new under the sun. Just when we think we have arrived, that we know it all, God reveals it has already happened long, long ago. In Luke 1, 5 through 7, it describes an elderly couple named Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth says they were very godly people, but they were barren. They had no ch children. And in verse, uh, chapter 1, verses 11 through 13, the angel Gabriel goes to Zechariah and says, Your wife Elizabeth shall bear a son. A son. Gabriel even told Zechariah his name shall be John. And of course, that John was to become John the Baptist. And in verse 57, just as Gabriel had predicted and prophesied, she brought forth a son. And in Luke chapter 1, 26 through 38, Gabriel, that same angel, appears to Mary and announced she would conceive and bear a son. Gabriel told Mary her son's name would be called Jesus. Mary was puzzled. Why? How is this possible? She had never been with a man. And Gabriel explains in verses 34 through 35 that the Holy Ghost of God would come upon her and the Spirit would move and create this baby inside of her. Verses 36 through 38, Gabriel then reveals to Mary of Elizabeth's pregnancy. And the, Elizabeth was her cousin and of her child to be born, John the Baptist. There was no fireworks, there was no explosions, no pink and blue balloons. The reveal was done quietly, respectfully, wondrously, and privately. Today, today people go to great expense, great planning, and effort to attract social media attention. They'll, they'll have an airplane fly by and, and lay down pink smoke or blue smoke over a crowd of people gathered outside. Uh, one of them, a helicopter, did that, and the helicopter crashed and, that, and loss of life. That's what I'm talking about, how some of these have ended tragically. The helicopter crashed very nearby. They all saw it happen. But people have gone to great expense to, to outdo each other and to one-up each other on social media. It seems the baby is secondary to the opportunity to make headlines with the latest and greatest uh, uh, special effects, basically, of a gender reveal. Well, in verses 39 through 47 in chapter 2, it gives the account of Mary and Elizabeth meeting together. They hadn't seen each other in a long, long time. They gathered together and it tells of the events which unfolded. Verse 41, the baby inside Elizabeth, that's John the Baptist, he leapt in his womb, in her womb, upon hearing the news of Mary carrying Jesus. John the Baptist leapt in the womb, jumped in the womb with happiness and joy at the news that his Savior would be born of Mary. Mary, Joseph, Elizabeth, Zechariah, 
they all knew the two children about to be born, John the Baptist and Jesus, were to be males. They even knew the names assigned to them by God. Mary, in verse 42, was called blessed among women by Elizabeth, but Mary knew her condition. In verse 47, it says her spirit rejoiced in God, her Savior. Mary, who found grace in God's eyes, it says in verse 30, knew that she too needed a Savior. If the one chosen of God needed a Savior, then everyone, everyone needs a Savior. And I know some of you will be saying at this moment, you may be reaching to turn off the dial or turn off the volume or go find something else to look at today. Just like I did for 29 years, I just thought I did not need a Savior. But at age 29, I realized Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All included my Quentin. All included my wife, my son, my daughter. All, everyone, Elizabeth, Zechariah, Joseph, even Mary. Everyone needs a Savior. Why? Because in Romans 6, 23, it declares the wages of sin is death. Not just a physical death, but the death of your soul, which is going to live forever. So it'll be dead spiritually and we'll go into more of that toward the end of the message. She needed a Savior, just like Abraham did, just like Noah did, just like Jonah did. Those are all described in Hebrews 11, that they were saved by their faith in the coming Messiah, Jesus. Chapter 2 of Luke, verses 1 through 7, details the birth of Jesus. That's what I read you initially, where they were being taxed and they had to go to the city where their ancestors were from, to be counted in the census and assessed a tax. Well, in verses 8 through 20, the angels announced to the shepherds, there you have it, the first gender reveal in history. The very first gender reveal in history. But wait, there's more. Was this the first? Isaiah 7, 14, 700 years earlier, it says, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin, that's Mary, shall conceive and bear a son. Gender reveal, 700 years before Christ. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. Not just a child, but a son is given. Zechariah 9.9, 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon the donkey, the foal of a donkey. It says, he, gender reveal, in the days of Jeremiah. But, but, but wait, there's more, there's more. Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity between the woman, between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise his head and he shall bruise his heel. That, my friend, right after Adam and Eve sinned, God covered them with animal skins, shedding the first blood of sacrifice towards atonement and covering of their sins. And he predicted right there in Genesis in the Garden of Eden, in chapter 3, verse 15, I will send you a Messiah. I will send you a Savior. It will be a he. He will bruise his heel. Talking about Satan. He will bruise his head. Talking about uh, Satan. Jesus is the he in that verse. That, my friend, was the very first gender reveal in all of history. Not the date I quoted you at the beginning of this message. I think it was, what, uh, 2008 or something. Uh, the first recorded gender reveal that the world thought had happened. 
was um, uh, one up. It was done several thousand. And yeah, 2008, the first known gender reveal party was held. Well, the first known gender reveal in all of history was right there in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3. But wait, there's more. Abraham and Isaac, Genesis 15, predicted a son. J Judges 13, 3. Samson's birth was predicted. He would be a male. Elisha and the Shumanite woman in 2 Kings 4, 16. Again, gender reveal is not new. Gender reveal is as old as creation itself. God was in the gender reveal business 5,781 years ago, and he revealed to us that a Savior would be born. A Savior? What does that mean, to be saved? What does that mean? What are we saved from, and what are we saved to? Well, John 3.16 God sums it up. You remember, God in, is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three parts, okay? Three persons. And in John 3.16, the verse says, God, let me add, the Father, for clarification, God the Father so loved the world, that's you and that's me, that he sent, he, God the Father, sent his only begotten Son, Jesus, that whosoever, that's anyone, believes in Jesus should not perish, should not die, but have everlasting life. That's not talking about immortal life on this earth as a human being. That is talking about our physical being will die someday, but our spirit, our soul is going to live forever. And he gives us a choice. He revealed the gender of this Savior to us 2,000 years ago. Well, actually, at the beginning, 5,781 years ago. He revealed it in the Garden of Eden. And he did, at the appropriate time, the Bible says, he sent his son, Jesus, down to earth, became a man through birth of uh, the Virgin Mary, her giving birth to the Savior. The Savior lived a sinless life and about age 30 started his ministry and at age 33 approximately, he was crucified for our sins. He was completely sinless and they hated him for that. They hated him for saying he was God. They said it was blasphemous. It wasn't. He is God. He was God. He will always be God. He came down to pay that price that God demanded, that Adam and Eve started this cycle of sin that has just mushroomed out. And there's every sin in the evil mind of us and hearts of us can conceive. And we need a savior, someone to rescue us, to save us from those sins. He paid for those sins on the cross of Calvary by giving his life a perfect life, which was what God demanded. And now he offers that as a gift to you and to me. I accepted that gift August 15th, 1976. I realized I was a sinner and God had given me a choice, Jesus or hell. Jesus or Satan. I had been living an unsaved life. I was on my way to hell, not realizing it. And that's the point of this broadcast is to make sure that you have an opportunity to hear the gospel because that's what the Bible declares that we should do. Get this message out so everyone has an opportunity to be saved. And today I give this to you as a Christmas gift that God gave to me, August 15th, 1976, in the middle of the summer, I bowed my head, I bowed my heart, I asked Jesus to come into my heart to save me to, and to thank him for paying for my sins and be my savior. And now, if I dropped dead in the middle of this broadcast, my physical body would be dead, 
my spirit, the Bible declares, would immediately go to be with Jesus in heaven. And someday he will reunite the two into an immortal body, just like he had on Resurrection Sunday in the springtime after his crucifixion. Three days later, he bodily arose from the grave. Now is at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession, the Bible says, for you and me as our Savior. And so someday all of believers will be in heaven with him. The non-believers will have made a choice. You say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it and maybe I'll do it tomorrow. That's still a decision. You may never see tomorrow. So today I beg you to take this message of this gender reveal and everything that goes with it, the salvation by faith through Jesus Christ and none other, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. With that said, thank you for joining us this week, and God be with you.